I never grab some. some no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I never, I never teach these. So, um, but uh, I'm excited. So, I have a lot of friends that have been sending me um, their favorite idioms on Facebook. So, we'll go over some of those, and then I found a, another website that has a, has a lot. Um, hello, Lissandro. How are you? Uh oh, I can't hear you. No. Uh uh. Still nothing. Both. I don't know. <laughs> uh oh. Do you have headphones? No? Hmm. Is I have no idea. Okay. All right. Feel feel free to type, Lissandro, since I can't hear you. So, but um, I'm glad that you're here. So let's see. One, two, three, four. Five. We have room for one more. We have room for one more. Hey, Dennis, how are you? Are you there? Hey, is it Dennis? Yes. Hey, how are you? Pretty well. What about you? I'm doing good, doing good. Glad to see you in class. Thank so. you. Uh, Renee, you're always eating at the wrong times, dude. <laughs> so. All right, guys, um, let's get started. I'm teaching a class right after this, so I'm going to be leaving um, this class um, five minutes early. So um, we're going to be doing some idioms today. And I see some of you, a couple of you have already used a few. I asked Mauricio how his day was going, and he said it's raining cats and dogs. So it's raining cats and dogs means what, Mauricio? It's raining a lot. Yes, it's raining very hard, yeah. And um, Coco told me that she would be back in a flash. Be back in a flash, which, what does that mean? Anybody know? Um, uh, in a blink? She will, yeah, quickly. She will be back quickly. Yeah, she'll be back quickly. Another way we would say that would be in the blink of an eye. In the blink of um, an eye. Quickly. Mm-hmm, yep. So to yeah to come back very fast come back quickly, so um I guess a few of my friends on Facebook um sent me sent me some, and um the first one I want to go over is um quite funny I think, and I don't know if any of you have ever heard it but it's finer. Than frog's hair, finer than frog's hair. Does anybody have any idea what finer than frog's hair means? No, I thought <laughs> the frog doesn't have hair. Yeah, that's a good point, Mauricio. I'm glad you brought that up. Frogs don't have hair, so knowing that frogs don't have hair. What in the world does finer than frog's hair mean? Yeah. How are the tacos, How Renee? Are the tacos, Renee? <laughs> 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 
Eu já ia falar hi, hein? So, um, um, let's see. Let's see. Um, um, Abra, man, it, it's got a really bad echo coming from you, so I'm going to have to mute you for just a minute. Um, yeah, so, finer than frog's hair means, Mauricio said frogs don't have hair. It means that something or someone is very thin, because obviously frogs don't have hair, so if, if you said something like, Man, that um, that girl is finer than frog's hair. It means that she's really skinny, really skinny. Um, you can also my my stepdad uses this, and I think it's so funny. You can also use um, finer than frog's hair to say that you're doing really well. So if somebody says how are you, you can say, I'm finer than frog's hair. <laughs> so um, it means you're, do you're having a great day. You're doing really well. So um, has anybody ever heard that? No. No. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't think so. So I, my goal is, um, how many of you, let me ask you this, how many of you have taken an idiom course from Colingo. I did. I, I have taken some. You have taken some? You've taken one, Jefferson? Okay. You've taken one, two, Renee? Yeah. Like okay. Two, I think. Okay. All right. I was just curious because um, I don't think we offer them that often, but. Um, I was curious if, if you have been to a lot, um, dep would depend on how many um, idioms you know. There's a spot, guys. Um, so, yeah, so we'll see. There's a, there's so many. I mean, there's, there's so many idioms. Um, another one, there's actually three. My, I was talking to my mom um, before I did this class, and we came up with Three, hey Boo Baker, <laughs> came up with uh, three idioms that mean the same uh, thing, and um, I'll I'll give you all three of them, and then we'll we'll talk about them. Um, we have don't put all your eggs in one basket. You also have don't catch, or excuse me, don't count your eggs before they hatch, mm. and you also have don't put the cart before the horse, <coughs> excuse me. So um, have you ever, have, have any of you ever heard any of these? Yeah. Do you know what they mean, Renee? Yeah, it's like uh, you have to wait until uh, something is done. Yeah, for example, yeah. If you are uh, looking for a job, you can say, "Oh, I get the job," and and I'm, until you are sure that you get it. Exactly, exactly. So, and that's actually the exact example I was going to use as well. Is you know, let's say you uh, you don't have a job and you're job searching and you have an interview with one company and you just quit searching for a job because you're so sure that you're going to get that job and um, somebody might say to you one of these three you know don't put all your eggs in one basket or don't put the cart before the horse so yeah those are very um to be careful i think is also it, yeah it's saying you know just wait a second and don't don't get ahead of yourself don't get ahead of yourself. Yeah, better is safe than sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, another um, idiom that means that something is very skinny or narrow that one of my friends gave me was... Um, 
the width of a gnat's eyelash. So um, that's another one to mean, um, like if you were to say, um, I can't get through that opening. It's the width of a gnat's eyelash. Do you guys know what a gnat is? No. No. Okay. All right. Well, that changes things. Let me grab a picture. And um, it would actually help if I spelled it right. Um, here's a link to pictures of gnats. It's a bug. It's a very small bug. Um, the ones that get in your ears, <laughs> the very small bugs that are like zzz, and they get in your ears and they are very annoying. They won't leave you alone. It's way smaller than a fly. They're like super duper small. That's a gnat. So um, kind of like the whole finer than frog's hair. Frogs don't have hair. Um, a gnat does not have eyelashes. So um, to say that it's the width of a gnat's eyelash means that it's very narrow, very skinny. So um, do you guys know what a redneck is? Have you ever heard the term redneck? Only for discrimination. <laughs> or a hick. Or a hick. Redneck and a hick are kind of the same thing. Um, it's It can be derogatory. Honestly, Renee, it depends on who you're talking to. Um, I don't find it offensive. But um, I also consider myself part redneck, so um, it's okay. Um, a redneck or a hick is somebody who kind of lives out in the country, um, t stereotypically, lives out in the country, um, maybe doesn't have a real high education, um, that sort of thing. Um, I am proud to say that I have a lot of redneck friends. <laughs> And they have some of the best idioms that you could possibly imagine. Um, they're not always appropriate or they're kind of gross, but um, I'll stick with the ones that aren't really bad. Um, have, you, have you ever heard the phrase, slicker than snot? No. 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 You guys are learning all kinds of ones today. Um, thank you, redneck friends, if you ever watch this. Um, so, yeah, slicker than snot. Um, that is a idiom used to describe if something is really slick. Um, for example, let's say it hasn't rained in a long time, and then it rains, and you're the roads, you know, get really slick, and um, you're getting ready to go to the store or whatever, and you're getting ready to leave, and your girlfriend, boyfriend, mom, dad, whoever, looks at you and says, be careful driving. The roads are slicker than snot. Um, it just means that something is very slippery. It's just a colorful way of saying it. Do you guys know what snot is? No? No. 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 <laughs> I know you guys are like staring at me like, what is she talking about? Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, it's, no, it's not dangerous. Um, it just means that something's very slippery. Okay, snot is the stuff that comes out of your nose. Booger. Boogers, yeah. But like runny boogers. <laughs> oh. What's, okay. what's, the, what's the difference between booger and snot? Snot's more runny. It's more watery. Oh. The consistency. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the consistency is different. <laughs> a booger is like a little bit harder, you know, and snot's kind of runny. And a little green and oh my yeah. god. <laughs> So, um, you know, and it's 
it's slippery. Snot is is slippery in consistency, right? So if you say it's slicker than snot, it means that it's um, really slippery. I know Americans are weird. I don't know where all these sayings come from. I don't know who came up with them. I don't know why we use them other than they're funny and add a little bit of humor to our day. Um, but yeah, so if, if you want to say that something's really slippery, you can say it's slicker than snot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if I told you, if I said, hey, Renee, go jump in the lake. Have you ever heard that? Yeah, it's like you're tired of him or something like that, right? Yeah, exactly. It means like you're sick of somebody. Yeah. Why don't you just go jump in the lake? You know, why don't you get out of my face? Get away from me. Please. Yeah. Whose dog? It's mine. Sorry. Oh, okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> what kind of dog do you have? It's the, uh, how do you call the, the one that's like a sausage that's long? A, a dachshund. A dachshund. Uh huh. Okay. Or, or um, informally, we would call it a wiener dog. <laughs> <laughs> a wiener dog. <laughs> so, because okay. they, or we also can call them. My mom has one, or you can call them a hot dog, because you know they're long, okay. like <laughs> long like a hot yeah. dog. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I don't know how. The, um, sorry. Can, no, how do you call the the dogs from the streets and mix breeds? <laughs> The, say that again. <laughs> it has, has no race. It's oh, a, a mutt. A mutt. A mutt. Yeah, a mutt. I have a mutt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, let's see. Um, we already went over. It's raining. I'm going through my Facebook right now looking at what everybody sent me before I go to the website. Um, this one's kind of cute. Um, Let's see if you can figure out what this means. So if, um, let's say I'm talking to a little kid and I say to them, well, you're just knee high to a grasshopper. Does everybody know what a grasshopper is? Yeah. It's another bug. Yeah. The one who jumps. Yeah, the one that jumps, exactly. No clue? Nobody wants to guess? Knee high to a grasshopper. Do you guys know what the terminology knee high means? If you say something is knee high? If you no. say something. If you say something is, okay, let me back up. Does everybody know what a knee is? Nope. Yeah, nope. the knee. Yeah. No. Yeah, the knee. Yeah, the, this, you know, this part of your leg. <laughs> yeah, knee. part from yeah. your leg. Yeah, it's, um, it's the, the bend part. Yeah. yeah the knee. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if you say something is knee high, that means it comes up to your knee. It's as tall as your knee. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you say something's knee high and that's as you know that's as tall as it is, if you say to somebody, "You're knee high to a grasshopper," grasshoppers. A little. Are exactly. Good job. Yeah. It means that you're short. Mhm. Mm yeah. Knee high to a grasshopper means somebody is short. Does that make sense? No, yeah. I know idioms don't make sense, but um, yeah, <laughs> um, that was a trick question. Yeah, I haven't heard that one in a really long time. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I'm Shanae. Could you give me another example? <laughs> another example of what? Knee high to a grasshopper? Yeah. Like a different idiom, or? I don't, um, 
Let me see if I can you can you use it in a sentence, for example? <laughs> um, well, if you... I'd have to probably give you... Okay, let's say... Does anybody consider themselves short? I do. <laughs> I'm short. I'm very short. Um, I'm like five foot nothing. So, um, yeah, so my husband's tall. So my husband could say to me that I am knee high to a grasshopper. Basically saying in comparison to him, I'm really small. I'm really short. But you wouldn't, I mean, in terms of using it in a sentence, you, um, you, it's not really a sentence. You would just look at somebody and say, wow, you're knee high to a grasshopper. It's kind of another, I don't know, country redneck thing, um, you know, knee high to a grasshopper. So um, I don't know how, how else to explain it other than just know that knee high to a grasshopper means that you're short. So, if somebody says that to you, they're calling you short. Oh. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, if somebody walked up to you and said, Renee, you're knee high to a grasshopper, they're calling you short. <laughs> so, small. Like, short is in height wise. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> short is in height wise. So, not like short uh, minded or anything like that. Yeah. Um, does that make better sense? What means grasshopper? Grasshopper. Let me get I you a picture. I don't understand. Okay. Um, I'll screen share this. Okay. These are grasshoppers. Does everybody see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so so these these are grasshoppers. And I I guess where the idiom came from is this part of the grasshopper where my cursor is. I guess you could say yeah, that's like that's it. yeah, that's like a knee. So they would say you're knee high to a grasshopper. So you're super do, short. Do you remember Kung Fu series? A kung fu uh, series? Yes, the, the 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 master said to to the to to, to his pupil, be patient, little grasshopper. Oh yeah, that's different. Yeah, that's different. I have no idea what that means, but I know exactly what you're talking. They, like, oh, young grasshopper. Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, and it is like a locust. Exactly, exactly. I think locusts are bigger though. So, um, what if, and it's not derogatory, by the way, it's not like a derogatory term. Um, I would be more offended if somebody just called me short than if somebody said I'm knee high to a grasshopper. To me, that's like cute. You know, it's like, oh, you're so cute and short and little, you know, so um, instead of man, you're short, you know, I would take, I would take way more offense to to man, you're short, then you're knee high to a grasshopper. You'd probably um, most often hear like a grandparent saying that to a grandchild. You know, it's kind of an old saying. Um, so it's more reserved for kids. Who what if I called you a snake in the grass? So it sounds like you're an, an intruder or something. Like like you're an intruder? Okay. Yeah, intruder, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good guess. That's a good guess. Um, in danger, um, oh, to danger. hide. Um, no, you got these are all really good guesses. It's not what is it, it when you when you say snake in the grass, you're actually talking about somebody. Like if I said, man, that guy is such a snake in the grass. 
it, it is someone who betrays you? Getting closer, yeah, they could. They definitely could betray you. It definitely would be somebody you did not trust. Um, have you ever heard the word sleazy? No. No? Sleazy, let's see. Um, Sleazy means like you are a dishonest, yeah, deceitful person. So if you're sleazy, people don't trust you. They think you're up to something. Um, you're not to be trusted. So um, a snake in the grass is a sleazy person. Um, the way my friend on Facebook put it to me, she said, um, an old boss of mine used to call this one particularly sleazy salesman a snake in the grass. So he's saying that that salesman is not to be trusted. He's probably going to sell him something he doesn't need or want. And... Um, like he's a jerk. He's a sleaze ball. Not somebody you want to be around. Yeah, despicable. I like that word, despicable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the next class you guys go to, I expect you to use as many idioms as possible. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, what if I said your good night, Mallory? Thank you for coming. What if I said you're walking on thin ice? Good night. Good night, Thank Mallory. You. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Mallory. You're Good walking thing. on thin ice. That the, you could be in dangerous something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you are in a bad situation. Kind of, yeah. Um, parents, parents will say this idiom to their kids a lot. So imagine, take yourself back to when you were a little kid. And this is a classroom full of men. So I'm sure all of you were just angels as boys, right? Um, and never did anything bad when you guys were kids, right? Um, so Im imagine that. Um, hey, Dr. Louise, by the way. Hi, how are you? everyone. I'm good. How are you? Hi, Louise. Hi. Hi, thank you. Good. So how are you? Yeah, doing well, doing well. So glad to see you. Glad to see you. So, um, Jefferson, something tells me that's not true. Um, <laughs> so imagine you're a little boy and you are doing something that you are not supposed to be doing and your mom tells you three, four, five times to stop doing whatever it is that you're doing um, and you don't and she's getting really agitated with you. And she says, Mauricio, you're walking on thin ice. What is she saying to you? Like I'm, go I'm going to hit you or next time or sooner. Yeah, you're going to be I'm in gonna... trouble. Yeah, you're yeah. going to be in big trouble. Absolutely. Yeah, you're going to be in big trouble. You got to so... be careful, Mauricio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if I tell you if you're like, if you're um, in one of my classes and you're being disruptive or whatnot, and I, I'll tell you, you're walking on thin ice. So um, that means I'm going to boot you out of class. I know. Sorry. I apologize. My mocking Jay. 
whatever. I can't really remember. Cool. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not a very good whistler. Um, here's one. Uh, like, Shanae's story. Yeah. Please tur turn off the cell phone. Remember that you are in, uh, you're working on a thin ice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, I don't even know. Don't worry. What it is. I don't know. Oh, my I mom. knew it. I heard of it before. I have, I have two, um, two people that call me. It's my mom and my husband. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's one of the two. Um, but yeah, so, um, Here's the next one I'm going to give you is one that I know for sure you could use in class one day, um, probably sooner rather than later. Um, it is. It sounds like a herd of elephants in here. I think it is when there is a lot of noisy. Exactly, when it's really loud. Yeah, exactly. So when everybody starts talking at once or um, you're at a loud party or, um, you know, four people's microphones decide to echo in, in class, um, you can say it sounds like a herd of elephants in here. Yeah, like Renee's roosters. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, mine, Car really. <laughs> Juan Carlos, dude, you're a half an hour late. What's the deal? Just kidding. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, a herd of elephants is um, when something's really loud. Um. I'm de there's one that's like really funny. Um, I'm just not so sure how appropriate it is for class. Um, oh please! <laughs> um, it's really funny. Um, it's an <laughs> another one of my friends. She said, "Since I'm so redneck," um, and then she gave me a few of her favorite redneck idioms. Um, I just don't want to. I just don't want to offend anybody. Um, although we've already talked about boogers and snot, so I guess I guess everything's off limits in, in this case. Um, I'll type it. Um, although I'm sure I'll have to say it out loud. <laughs> no offense. Um, Does everybody know what a punch bowl is, first of all? A punch bowl? Like, um... Boxing? No, not not that kind of punch. Like, punch like the drink? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a, this is a punch bowl. I'll show you a picture. This is a punch bowl. You see them at parties a lot. Sometimes they have alcohol in them. Sometimes they don't. But those are those are punch bowls. And obviously, the idea behind a punch bowl is that everybody drinks out of the same bowl, right? I mean, obviously, you ladle it out, but it's meant for everybody to drink. So that's a punch bowl. And I'm. Um, it really depends, Jefferson. Sometimes people put oranges in them, really any kind of fruit. Some people put strawberries or cranberries. Um, it's usually like a fizzy, like a carbonated um, concoction. Sometimes there can be alcohol. In sure. fact, if, if there was alcohol in a punch bowl, um, somebody would say the phrase, who spiked the punch bowl? you spike something, that means you put alcohol in it. So who spiked the punch bowl? But that being given about what a punch bowl is, um, um, <laughs> that'll go over <laughs> like a turd in a punch bowl. 
Um, I guess I should have asked you guys know what a turd is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's what comes out when you have a certain bodily function. It's hard to explain. <laughs> um, another word would be poop. <laughs> Do you guys know what poop? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Um, so, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, Dr. Louise, you're the doctor. What is, like, the, the, the medical terminology for that? <laughs> Sorry, for what? <laughs> for, you know that thing that we were just talking Poo. about. Poo, yeah. What's the medical, is there a medical term? I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyways, obviously that's not something you would want in a punch bowl, right? You don't want to drink that. So if you say that'll go over like a turd in a punch bowl, you're saying that's not going to go over very well. Um, nobody's going to like that. <laughs> so, um, I apologize. I hope I didn't offend anybody. Um, so, no, 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 no. Okay. so um, just remember that these are, these are my, these are friends of mine. Yeah, I am too. I'm just like, ah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm supposed to be a lady, right? So, um, yeah. So um, that's probably one of the most redneck things you can get. Um, I don't know how you say it in Spanish or Portuguese. How do you say that in Spanish? How do you, near, no, that's that's a bad word. Um, how do you say it in Spanish, Renee? Do you know? Um, the third? Yeah. Third. Um... I think we have many many words to express, but we are in English class. Yeah. <laughs> um, you guys have a lot of words for it, though. So we, I guess, we do too, honestly. Um, all right. So that's um, that's that one. Um, thank you, Terry, for that one. Um, this is a really old one. When I, I told, I actually had to ask my mom what it meant because I had no idea what this means. I, I didn't have any idea what it meant. Um, Shanae, what, what was the last video? What was what? About the punch bowl and I don't know if you say it. <laughs> um, I'll type it again. Okay, um, please. <laughs> It just means that that's it means that if if you do, it means like don't do that because that's not nobody's gonna like that if you do it. That's basically what it means. Yeah. So yeah, so that's what it means. But um, yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. I think um, yeah. So yeah, it starts with S and finishes with a T. It has two letters in the middle. Yeah. So, Coco, we can see you. Awesome, awesome. Um, so here's another one. Thank you, Mauricio. Okay, um, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> this is a really old saying. Um, it means that, let's say you want to get rid of something that's bad in your life. But there's a possibility that when you get rid of that something bad, you're also going to have to get rid of something good. Um, and you don't want to do that. So you can say, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. 
because obviously the baby is the good thing and the dirty bath water is the bad thing. So it's like saying, don't throw the good out with the bad. Don't throw the good out with the bad. So, yeah. That's a really old one. It's really old. Um, let's see. I'm trying to... Have you guys have, have you guys heard any idioms that yeah don't waste opportunities yeah that's that's good Mauricio like just because something bad happens don't throw it all away you know just try to hang on to the good and um, keep going so yeah um, have you guys heard any that you're not sure of what they mean? I know I used this a long time ago um, in one of my really early morning classes. Um, uh, <laughs> sorry, Miguel. Juan Carlos beat you. <laughs> so. Sorry, bro. <laughs> okay. So, oh, you didn't hear um, Jefferson. Okay, so um, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. It means don't throw the good out with the bad. So don't waste your opportunities just because something bad happens to you. Um, don't dwell on the bad things and forget about the good things so that the good things go away too. It's basically saying, um, you know, just don't, don't throw away the good things just because you're throwing away the bad things. So, you know, hang on to what's good. Um, and then um, I just typed in the one bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Um, that's a phrase we use for somebody when they wake up in the morning and it doesn't take them a long time to wake up like it does me um, sometimes. Sometimes I'm up. Sometimes I'm bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Other times I'm like, oh gosh, just 20 more minutes of sleep. But um, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed basically just means you're awake and you're ready to go and you're ready to seize the day. And somebody who hasn't had their coffee wants to probably kill you. And <laughs> um, so yeah, it just means that you're awake and, and ready to go. Um, Ooh, this is a good one. Um, oh, whoops. And Shnei. Yeah. And uh, this one, for example. Uh, my friend calls me and she, he or she says, uh, are you ready? So I can say yes, I'm bright eyed and bushy tail. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Means you're ready to go. You're awake and ready to go. Exactly. Um, have you guys ever heard this one? A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Yeah. 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 You guys same know in that? Spanish. <laughs> oh, it's the same in Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. yes. All right. Does everybody know what it means? Yeah. What does it mean? Like you should get a chance, like the chance you got now, don't leave it for a far away chance or something like, don't leave it for tomorrow. Exactly, yeah, yeah. don't don't take a high risk, you know, um, stay with something that's, that's certain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um let's what, say... What about... What about go to bed four? Say that again? Go to bed four. Oh, go to bat four. Go to bat four. Yeah, um, that's a good one. If you say, um, let's see, um, she always, she always goes to bat for him. It means that someone is still 
sticking up for you or defending you or defending you. So um, if you go to bat for somebody, let's say, um, let me try to think of an example. Let's say, let's say you're, somebody's giving your friend a hard time. You know, you're, you're sitting around talking about, um, you really want your friend to quit smoking. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and um, and somebody's and, and well, let's see, somebody's giving your friend a hard time about smoking and is always like, you know, you shouldn't smoke. It's bad for you, blah, 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 blah. And like you're kind of sick of that person just constantly giving your friend a hard time. So you would go to bat for them and be like, hey, you know, leave them alone. You know, quitting smoking is hard. You know, let's be more yeah. supportive and maybe that'll work. So going to bat for somebody means that you're sticking up for them or defending them. So, yeah. and, um, Boo Baker, I, I actually, um, I wasn't trying to pick on you with that cause I have no room. I I'm actually, I'm a smoker myself. So, um, I know, I know. So, um, <laughs> it's very bad. You smoke too? You smoke? I, I do, I do smoke. So yeah, you, you never that, smoke and listen. I, I can't I don't, handle or listen with it. <laughs> I don't smoke in class. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, because I and I don't smoke in my house. So um, yeah. Uh, I see. Yeah, I know Bye. that I'm gonna quit. I am gonna <laughs> quit. I'm gonna quit. So. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Me yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what everybody says. I actually did quit. I actually did quit. My husband and I actually both quit for about four months. Um, and I have no idea why we started up again. But um, I just wanted to let Boo Baker know I'm not, I wasn't picking on you. But that's, I, it's a really, it was just, a, that's a good example. For yeah, yeah. When somebody goes to, goes to that for you. Yeah. Um, Gosh, there's so many. I found the most amazing website for idioms, um, but I don't want to give it to you guys because I'm sure a lot of I'm sure a lot of other teachers use it too, and um, I don't want to have you guys go into class and you guys know every single one. Um, okay, what about lick someone boots? Say that again. Lick someone boots. Can you type it? Lick someone's boots. Lick someone's boots. Um. Oh wow. I haven't. Um. I haven't ever really heard that. I'm not. Sh I'm. Sh maybe I have. I have. I have a feeling. I have a pretty darn good feeling. Um. That I know what it means. To lick someone's boots means that you're sucking up or kissing up. Um. Do you guys know what that means? Yeah. I know that phrase, but with another end instead of boots. But I heard it's a curse word, so. Yeah. It, does it start with an A? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, exactly, Miguel. Perfect. Yeah. Um, another word we would say for that, um, a little bit nicer, is um, <laughs> a brown noser. It means the same thing. Because if you are kissing someone's, you know what, <laughs> um, Water. then that other thing we were talking about might get on your nose, <laughs> and it's called a brown noser. Mm -hmm. That's probably like the worst if somebody calls you a brown noser. That's that's bad. That means that you are so obvious in kissing your boss's you know what. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, any more that you guys know of that you want to get On the take. Which one? On the take. On the take. That one I don't know. If you say you're on the lamb, now that's that's um a different one. If you say you're on the lamb, that means yeah. you're um 
on the run, like you're running from the law, <laughs> so, um, and you're hiding from the law, if you say somebody's on the lam, it means you're running away from the law. Uh, I think it's like, um, uh, um, like, uh, like if someone who's stealing from work is on the lay on the take. I've never heard that. To be honest, I've never heard that, and it could totally be right, which what you're saying. Um, but there's like a, there's so many English idioms that I, I I don't know them all myself. I really don't. Um, but that could be right. I'll I'll look it up and see if I can't, or I'll and I'll ask somebody and I'll get back to you on that one, Boo Baker. Okay. So um. No, no curse words classes, you guys. No, 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 no curse words classes. Unless we do like foreign language curse words, because those are always fun. Yeah, so, yeah, we need some one classes. That. Yeah, so like Portuguese swear words, French swear words, you know, no. Yeah. But um, we'll, uh, we'll have to exchange those some other way, I'm sure. Um, what if I said over my dead body? That's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We say that in Arabic too. Oh, really? Okay, good. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, bend over backward. If you bend over backward for somebody, it means that you go out of your way for that person. Um, so. Um, you, you, you do whatever it takes to help. Um, sometimes people will say that after somebody has burn, burned them, if after somebody has done something not nice to them, um, you would say, like, you were, let's say you were talking to somebody about it, and you say, you know, I really bent over backwards for them, and this is how they treated me. Um, it means, you know, you really went out of your way to, um, to do something nice for that person and they're very ungrateful. Um, so yeah, that's what bend over backward is. So, okay guys, um, that was, that was fun. I, I mean, it's really informal just telling you guys about idioms, but, um, we did a lot of them. So, um, vocabs next. So if you guys want to join me for vocabulary, that is where I will be. So. Okay. Okay. There. I'll see you bye guys. Bye. Thank, you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Bye guys. Bye Chennai. See you in four minutes. See you. See you. Yeah. Hey, Will Baker. Hello. Are you going? Are you going to the next class? Yeah. Sure. Take care, Miguel. <laughs> Hello, Mauricio. Hello, Hello Bob Baker. How's your Spanish How you doing? going? Huh? <laughs> How's your Spanish going? Oh, my Spanish. Yes. Well, it's hard to, a little bit to speak Spanish, you know. Uh, so I, I, no, I, I, I'm just giving up. I don't. I don't no, no, have no! Don't give up. To... Huh? Step by step, slowly <laughs> you can, you can, you can, you can learn Spanish. <laughs> well, it's you just a little me. hard. It's just because I think you're very smart. I think you're huh? very smart. I think you're very smart. Me? Yeah. No. Uh, yes. Are you Mr. Bill Baker? So yes. <laughs> yes, Miss. Yes, Bill Baker. You. You are very smart. Of course. <laughs> uh, I'm trying too. I'm trying. <laughs> Good. It's uh, these classes uh, are very very fun, aren't aren't they? Yeah, they are. I, I enjoy a lot. I, I've enjoyed 
Well, uh, it would be enjoyable if it's uh, Spanish and for Arabic, they, you would get a lot of Arabic comes in uh, because the accent of Spanish, it's it's so nice and Portuguese too, it's sound same. Um, yeah, I, I, go ahead, Jefferson. No, <laughs> I was going to say something. Um, no, I like a nonsense. <laughs> you know, uh, he he was talking about Ronaldo. Why? Why Ronaldo? No, I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> go ahead, Mauricio. Uh, Ronaldo, uh, Boo Baker. I think that the Arabic is more difficult to be learned yeah. than Spanish. What's up, yeah. guys? <clears throat> Hello, hey, Miguel. Hey. <laughs> Hello. How you doing? <laughs> Do you miss me? <laughs> yeah, of course, man. Yes. <laughs> where were you? I was paying the bills. Excuse me? What's up? I was paying bills. He was no. paying uh -huh. the bills. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. have a job, but he ne he <laughs> he needs to pay the bills. Yeah, I need to. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, see you. See you in the next class because I'm going to take a seat. My seat. I'm going to to take advantage to take my seat. So uh, okay. Okay, you. Okay. Don't be late, Bo Baker. No, I will not. Uh, Send us the link. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you guys. Hello, Luis. Bye, bye, Bo Baker. Bye, bye. bye, bye. Right, listen. <laughs> leave this window. Leave this window open. And send us the link. Copy it there. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, so everybody who was talking in here just click and go and get on. in. Yeah, yeah, much better. No, no, I prefer to go there and wait for it. Because <laughs> I really want to take. Oh, Jefferson is smiling. He's yeah, frozen. Uh, <laughs> his connection is froze, yeah. Yeah, it's frozen. You people 19 seconds please everybody I, I'm gonna live okay because okay when, okay okay <laughs> because when we have this uh, window open we cannot go to the other one okay okay, okay. see you there see you. peace peace peace